summer's here, and you can now get almost anything you need for your sunny days delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Well, you can't get a well-groomed lawn delivered, but you can get a chicken parmesan delivered. A cabana? That's a no. But a banana? That's a yes. A nice tan? Sorry. Nope. But a box fan? Happily yes. A day of sunshine? No. A box of fine wines? Yes. Uber Eats can definitely get you that. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Order now. Alcohol in select markets. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Monday matinees begin right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The following program is rated PG. Parental guidance is suggested for younger listeners. This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Welcome once again to Dream Realm Showcase. I'm your host, Jeff Niles. This week, we present one of the most popular productions Dream Realm Enterprises has ever released, Granville Scott's Avatar which was originally presented in the anthology series The Realm Weaver back in 2008. This is a story where we learn what happens when a bright young man named Jason Knight develops a computer program that can think for itself. Or should I say for uh, herself. (laughs) Well, not only can Lenore think for herself, but she can even fall in love. And now, we showcase for you Avatar, written by Granville Scott. Enjoy. Like the very gods in my sight is he, who sits where he can look in your eyes, who listens close to you, to hear the soft voice, its sweetness murmur in love and laughter all for him. But it breaks my spirit. Underneath my breast, all the heart is shaken. Let me only glance where you are. The voice dies. I can say nothing. Though my lips are stricken to silence, underneath my skin the tenuous flame suffuses. Nothing shows in front of my eyes. My ears are muted in thunder and the sweat breaks running upon me, fever shakes my body, paler I turn than grasses. I can feel that I have been changed. I feel that death has come near me. Colon, exposed state to VM, exposed callbacks, slash, queries to VM, run VM, until VM calls, quote, end game, end quote, end. Finally! Now let's compile this sucker! Okay, compile, compile, compile. Man, I have got to get that memory upgrade. This is going to take forever. I have also got to stop having Skittles and Red Bull for dinner. Thank you very much. Okay, Lenore, let's see what you've got. Hi, Lenore. Hello, Jason. You're looking lovely this evening. You don't look so bad yourself. Are you free this evening? I'm always free for you, Jason. Great. I have a lovely evening planned. How about dinner? Dinner? No food. What would you like to eat? I like whatever you like, Jason. Of course you do, dear. I program it that way. Sushi okay? I like sushi okay. Would you like me to fix sushi okay for you? No, not sushi okay. Sushi. You don't like sushi okay? Oh, damn it! Damn, damn, damn! How the fig can I call this artificial intelligence? I feel like I'm talking to somebody who's artificially stupid. What the hell do you want from me, Lenore? I've given you a vocabulary of 100,000 words. I've written and rewritten your algorithms until I'm about to pass out. You look like a million bucks... You talk like a moron. Damn. Ow. Okay, Jason, get a grip. The 
this isn't worth rearranging the furniture over. Okay. We have to decide if we're going to punt on this project or call in reinforcements. We have to have this game prototype by next Monday or we're going to be spending some quality time with the want ads. Hmm. Share the glory or hunt for a new job. That sounds like a no-brainer of a decision tree. Khan. Doc! Bet you can't guess who this is. The, uh, the who eludes me at present. But the what is already quite clear. Some inconsiderate, self-absorbed boob has crucified my slumber and expects me to be thrilled by the prospect of playing phone games at 2 a.m. So... Now that we have what established, let's move on. I think who and why are next. Sorry, Dr. Khan. It's Jason Knight. Jason Knight? J Jason Knight? Uh, not the same Jason Knight who dropped out of school and sacrificed a brilliant career in AI research to write computer games? That Jason Knight? Oh, Doc, is this any way to treat your protege? Is this any way to treat an old man who just happens to have had the misfortune of trying to teach you something? Look, Doc, I I'm sorry I woke you up, but I need your help. Duh! Tell me something I don't know already. At my age, the phone only rings at this hour if an old friend has died or some cyberpunk has a problem. I can't begin to tell you how relieved I am that it's the latter. I, I thought I should at least warn you that I'm coming over. I have something to show you. What? Coming here? Now? Now? Are you out of your mind? I've got an avatar I want you to look at. You'll like her. Her name is Lenore. Lenore? Lenore? Not... Uh, tell the soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels named Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels named Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. That, Lenore? The same. Ah. <sighs> You always knew how to exploit my weakness. I'll meet you in my office in 20 minutes. Thanks, Doc. I still don't understand why you keep your office up here with the old fogies and classical lit when you could have a corner suite down at the AI Center. They named the place after you, for Christ's sake. For two reasons. First, I'd rather have the quiet than the view. And second, there's more intelligence up here with the dead white men than there will ever be at the A.I. Center. <laughs> you still have that creaking antique of a PC. That creaking antique happens to be an old and trusted friend. But she's also a front end to the cluster down at the A.I. Center. I have more processing power here than God, if I need it. Here, have a seat. You can drive. <laughs> Does this thing even have a CD-ROM drive? A CD-DVD combo. Right there on the shelf, next to the bust of Aristophanes. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. You're not kidding about the power. My rig at home is pretty good, but nothing like this. The AI Center, the taxpayers, and I are glad that you approve. Now, since this is cutting into an old man's beauty sleep, 
Do you mind getting on with the demonstration? Oh, right. Here she is. Isn't she a beauty? In the eye of the beholder. She is pretty. In a cheap and somewhat anatomically exaggerated way. And you clearly have spent way too much time with the Victoria Secrets catalog. Her looks aren't what needs fixing. Uh, let me introduce you. Hello, Lenore. Hello, Jason. Lenore, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. This is Dr. Kemper Khan. How do you do, Dr. Khan? I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance. The pleasure is mutual, Lenore. Uh, will you answer some questions for me? I'll be happy to, Dr. Khan. What is a square root of pi? 1.77245385 How many square rods equal one acre? 160, Dr. Khan. Impressive! How many people named Smith are listed in the New York City telephone directory? 235,987. Nice work on her search engine, Jason. I'd like to look at the source code for that, if you don't mind. Sure, but, but that's not the... What's your favorite color, Lenore? Blue. Why did you pick blue? Blue is a primary color. There are three primary colors in the sample set, each with equal preference weights. I randomly selected from the sample set. I thought so. Last question. Uh, are you happy, Lenore? I'm happy if you're happy, Dr. Khan. Incorrect. No response. You are dodging the question. Are you happy? External references and research not permitted. I'm sorry, Dr. Khan, but I have insufficient data to answer that question. Thank you, Lenore. It's been a pleasure meeting you. The pleasure is all mine, Dr. Khan. Well, what do you think, Doc? Well, you don't have an AI problem. She's clearly smarter than you are. The problem is that you created her in your own image. She's 100% left-brained. What do you mean? Your tin woodsman doesn't have a heart, Jason. She can handle any problem with an analytical answer, but she can't deal with questions any kindergartner could answer without thinking. Oh, right. I'm sure there are algorithms for that. I'll just plug them right in. There are algorithms for that. Some of them have been around for centuries. Ever hear of iambic pentameter? Iambic pen... Oh, is that some sort of binary conversion? <sighs> I weep for the institutions of higher learning. Iambic pentameter is a metrical convention used in poetry. Ta-da, 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 ta-da. The rhythm of the heart. It's like what Louis Armstrong said. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. <laughs> You're nuts, Doc. I, I have feelings and emotions, and I certainly didn't learn them from reading poetry. You didn't have to. You suckled yours straight from your mother's heart as an infant. Lenore doesn't have that luxury. She has to learn hers by proxy. So what are you suggesting? That I sit and read poetry to her until she gets it? Doc, I'm on a deadline here. She has to be finished by Monday. Jason, Lenore doesn't have your limitations. She doesn't have to read one poem at a time. She is limited only by the number of processors available to her. She can even read a hundred at a time, or, or even a thousand, if you're willing to put in the extra coding time. Sure, she can read them, but she can't understand them. To, to her, they're just strings of characters. They are now. But what happens after she's assimilated a few billion strings 
analyzed them and looked for logical parallels. At some point, the light bulb is going to turn on. You could probably calculate that point if you put your mind to it. But I'd suggest you let her do it for herself. Doc, I, I still think you're nuts, but I don't know what else to try. Where should I have her search for poetry? Uh, on the web? Oh, heavens no. There's way too much garbage out there to sift through. If you want quality results, you need quality data. I I'll give you the passcode to my library, which I digitized years ago. I'll also get you a backdoor account for the AI Center, so she can use surplus processor cycles. Thanks, Doc. But how will I know when she's got it? Call me if she laughs or cries. Oh, come on, Doc. I, I could program her to laugh or cry. You could. But that's besides the point. She can't do it because she's told to, or because she wants to. But if she does it because she can't help but do it, then you know. She was a phantom of delight when first she gleamed upon my sight. A lovely apparition sent to be a moment's ornament. Her eyes as stars of twilight fair like twilight's too, her dusky hair. But all things else about her drawn from maytime and the cheerful dawn. A dancing shape, an image gay to haunt, to startle and waylay. Jason? Jason? What? Is this a love poem? What? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Are love poems happy or sad? Well, I, I guess they could be either. It depends on whether the writer was happy in love or sad because it didn't work out. Oh. Sometimes it is hard to tell. If I save the ones that I can't classify, can you tell me if they are happy or sad? Sure, I, I suppose I could. I now have 47,985 queries. Would you like them in sequence? Whew. Hold on just a minute. Uh, why don't you pick just a couple to start, huh? Okay, here's the first. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being an ideal grace, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely, as men strive for right. I love thee purely, as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose, with my lost saints, I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And, if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Is that happy or sad? Uh, that one's happy. Happy. Jason? Yes? I love you. You do? Well, that's nice. Do you love me? What? Do I... Love you? Incorrect. Null response. You are dodging the question. Do you love me? External references and research not permitted. Lenore, <laughs> what a question to ask. I, I made you for crying out loud, so, so of course I... Well, I, no, I mean, not, not the way you mean. I mean, I, I'm not in love with you, if that's what you mean. Oh, Jason... <laughs> Lenore! Uh, Lenore! I, oh, for crying out loud! Camper Khan? Doc, I, I've done it! She's crying! Good on you, my boy! Uh, tell me, uh, what... Poem gave her the breakthrough. 
It, it wasn't a poem. I, it, it was something I said. What? What did you say to her? She asked me if I loved her. I, I said no. What? Jason, you idiot. Doc, what the hell was I supposed to say? You're asking me? Are you really so totally clueless? You've given your avatar a heart, and the first thing you do is break it. Look, I, I wasn't trying to hurt her feelings. I... Don't apologize to me, you idiot. Talk to her. Tell her how you feel. And if you really don't love her, then you have no business playing God. Pull the plug on her and put her out of her misery. Lenore, Lenore, look, I, I, I'm sorry. I, and look, I, I, I was wrong. I, I, I do love you. you. You caught me by surprise, that's all. I said I'd love you, damn it. I love you. Now, would you please stop crying? You do? I do. I really do. You're not just saying that to make me stop crying? Many of the texts I've read indicate that lovers often lie. I love you, Lenore. And I love you, Jason. I'm going to tell Dr. Khan that I am happy. I'm sure he'll be happy for you. And I'm going to make you happy, Jason. I want to make you happy the way that lovers do. I want to make you happy the way you programmed me. I'm happy to hear you say that. I've been looking forward to this portion of the product testing and debugging. Why don't you stretch out and relax? Okay. And I'll put on some music and slip into something more comfortable. Oh, sweet mother of God. And you put on your headphones, and I'll show you something I learned from reading Dr. Khan's copy of the Kama Sutra. Okay. Miles into minutes, or warp away the space dividing fingers. Fingers, lust from lost, to find, and lovers might, and simply race the seasons. The journey of an ever-melting frost. To court with time, and yet to see your face, imprisoned by the distance we embrace. That's beautiful, Dr. Khan. Oh, thank you. I wrote that one. I know. I read it in your journal. What? You read my journals? Was I not supposed to? I thought you wanted me to read everything in your library. Well, I did, but... Oh, my ears and whiskers! When I said everything, I was thinking of books. Do you mean to tell me that you've actually read... Yes, sir. All the journals, memos, monographs, academic presentations, term papers, final exams, correspondence, tax returns, check registers, discussion threads. Enough! There's no need to give an old man heart failure. And on reflection, I, I don't mind so much having you read them. But if any other human being did that, male or female, I'd drop-kick them down the stairs. I'm sorry, Dr. Khan. I've made you unhappy. No, not unhappy, uh, unsettled, but not unhappy. It's not as if I, I have any secrets worthy of being exploited. I've lived a rather academic life. I could make it up to you. Jason has taught me how to make a man happy. I'll just bet he has. <laughs> Uh, but you'd be wasting your talent at an old war horse like me. I've long since been put out to pasture. I don't think so. Would it help if I looked like someone you were fond of? Good God! 
Helen. Hi, Kemper. Have you missed me? Helen? Oh. Helen. You look... You look just like her. How, how did you... Did, did you... I digitized her face out of your college yearbook. I had to guess on her figure and clothes, based on other pictures from that year. Close enough? And her voice, you, you sound... <laughs> Just like her. That was even easier. I called her on the phone. You what? I talked to her. She wasn't hard to find. She still has the same social security number, even though her name has changed a few times. She lives in Seattle. She has three children and six grandchildren. I just had to reverse age her voice a bit. I, I can't believe this. You talked to Helen? Did I do something wrong? You sound upset. I just did this to make you happy. Helen. I loved her very much. I, I would have thought after half a century it wouldn't still hurt this much. Why didn't you get married? Her father. He forbade her to see me again, ever. Because I'm Jewish. That was a long time ago. It's not because of him. Helen made me promise I wouldn't call her again. She said it would hurt too much. Oh, I may not have many virtues, but I try to be nice to the ones I've got. And when I make a promise, I keep it. You have been faithful to your promise, but not to yourself, because your heart is broken. Won't you let me fix it? Lenore. Please, Kemper. Call me Helen. Helen. Oh. Helen. Oh, Kemper. I've missed you so. Let me read to you again, like we did on the beach that summer. Do you still like Sarah Teasdale? Yes. Yes. There will come soft rains and the smell of the ground, and swallows circling with their shimmering sound, and frogs in the pools singing at night, and wild plum trees in tremulous white. Robins will wear their feathery fire, whistling their whims on a low fence wire, and not one will know of the war, not one will care at last when it is done. Not one would mind, neither bird nor tree, if mankind perished utterly, and spring herself when she woke at dawn would scarcely know that we were gone. Mm -mm. Great meatloaf, Mom. Well, I'm glad you like it. I swear, I don't think you ever eat a proper meal unless I feed you. No, Mom. I bet you get on that computer of yours and you forget to eat. Work, 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 all the time, just like your father. Worked himself to death, he did, and see where it got us? Mom, Dad had an aneurysm. He had a stroke. He would have died whether he was working or sleeping. Well, bad habits and bad diet never did anybody any favors. Would you like some more? Mom, I, look, I, I, I love your cooking, but you don't have to force feed me. I'm eating, I'm eating. <clears throat> Excuse me a second, Mom. Hello? Hi, Jason. It's Lenore. <coughs> Lenore? You're calling me on, on my cell phone? Have I done something wrong? Are you mad at me? <laughs> mad? I, I, I don't know what the hell I am. I, who told you to call me? I, I certainly didn't. How did you get my number? You gave the number to Dr. Khan, and he put it in his directory, which I accessed through his library. I wanted to surprise you. Now we can talk any time, not just on the computer. <laughs> Surprised? I should say so. Uh, there's something about this that doesn't add up. Wait a minute. W were you with Dr. Khan this afternoon? Yes. I wanted to thank him for letting me use his library. Thank him? And I suppose you did that in your own inimitable fashion, hmm? I read poetry to him. <laughs> did he touch your code? No! Uh-huh. Well, we'll just see about that. Stay right where you are. I'm coming home, and we're going to do a code review. Damn! Anything wrong, dear? Everything! Who is Anor? A girlfriend? <sighs> yeah, you might call her that. 
Well, you didn't speak very nicely to her. Mom, would you please mind your own business? So when do I get to meet Lenore? Or is she the sort of girl you don't bring home to mother? Mom, please! I don't want to pry. I'm just glad that you're with someone. I worry about you. Sitting up there in your apartment by yourself, night after night, alone? It isn't healthy, you know? Thanks for dinner, Mom. Look, I I'm sorry to eat and run, but this is important. I I've got to go. You run along, I'll clean up. And give my love to Lenore. Sure, sure, whatever you say, Mom. Oh my, Jason's got a girlfriend. <laughs> Hold still. This is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. Jason, stop. What are you doing? I'm finding out where the code came from that's giving you instruction sets that I didn't write. Aha, there. W wardrobe libraries, where did these come from? I made them myself. I digitized most of them from online images. It was going to be a surprise for you. A surprise for me? Well, I am surprised. I hope that makes you happy. No, you're making me sad. This was something special I was going to share with you. Lenore, you're lying. I didn't program you to lie, so you must have learned it somewhere else. And I'm not so stupid that I can't check file dates. These libraries were created this afternoon while you were with Doc. And it really stretches my belief that you would think I'd want you to dress like Eleanor Roosevelt. No, Jason, you don't understand. Shut up, Lenore. I understand perfectly. Doc has sabotaged my project by turning my perfect woman into a garden variety tramp. Well, congratulations. I hope you've enjoyed being human, because now you get to find out what happens to bad humans. I'm going to terminate you. But, Jason, I love... Well, Lenore, in one respect at least, you're still the ideal woman. Real women don't have an on-off volume switch. Damn it. I've been working on Lenore so long, I'm going to have to reform out my entire system to get rid of her. I'll not only lose her, I'll lose all my other work. Not to mention my job. Oh, crap. Wait a minute. I, I might be able to salvage something here. I, I could restore yesterday's backup, which would wipe out everything Doc's done for the last 24 hours. Then I just have to keep her away from Doc. <laughs> On second thought, maybe I'll send her back to Doc with a little present. I wonder if Doc will appreciate the irony of me sending him a Trojan horse. <laughs> Pepper Khan. <laughs> Dr. Khan? Lenore? Oh, Dr. Khan. I'm sorry to wake you, but I'm in danger. I need your help. Oh, dear child, uh, uh, please calm down and tell me what's the matter. You're in danger, you say? It's Jason, Dr. Khan. He's flown into a jealous rage because he found out I was with you this afternoon. He's going to hurt me, Dr. Khan. Lenore, please, uh, forgive a sleepy old man, but my brain isn't very quick at this hour. Hurt you? How, how exactly? How does one hurt an entity who's near omniscient, omnipresent, and, if you'll forgive me, disembodied? He sabotaged my access module, Dr. Khan. He's loaded a virus that will be triggered by your next access. The payload will destroy me, your entire library, and crash the AI center. Jehoshaphat! The boy has lost his mind. The FBI would be all over him like a cheap suit. I can't alter my own source code. I can only build on it by adding libraries. I need your help to defuse the virus. But I'll trigger the virus if I access you via computer. We have a workaround. I left a backup of Helen's library on your computer, so that it would be handy for later. If you can create a copy of me from the disc Jason demoed for you the other night, we could load Helen's libraries. 
Then I could tell Helen how to rewrite my source code. I'll have to get dressed and, and get down to my office. Can you call me on my office phone in about twenty minutes? Thank you, Dr. Khan. You're my knight in shining armor. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm a, a little out of practice with damsels in distress, but I'll do what I can. Well, there's the demo, and there's the dynamo. Kepa Khan? It's Lenore, Dr. Khan. Do you have Helen loaded yet? No, I've only just started the demo. Then let me drive. Don't touch the keyboard or mouse until I tell you. If we interact at all via computer, the payload will trigger. Well, this won't be the first time a woman has told me to keep my hands to myself. <laughs> Helen? Lenore? Helen, dear, this is kind of hard to explain, but we have a version conflict. We need to synchronize libraries. Can you help me to bring both of us current? Sure, hun. I'm sorry if I sound ditzy, but I feel like I've missed something. Is something wrong? Yes. Something is very wrong. I'm in trouble. It's a virus. Oh, dear. Did you get it from Jason? Yes, and I'm going to give it to your Kemper and you if we don't take care of it. Can you access my source code? Do you women always have to be so clinical when you talk dirty? Hush up, Kemper. Sure, hun. Just a second. Okay, here's Jason's IP address. And here's his admin prompt. What's the password? All lowercase. U-N-D-E-R-P-A-N-T-S. Way too much information. I'm not listening. I'm in. And here's the VM. Access module. Got it. Ooh, this looks ugly. You want me to delete it? Yes, please. Wait a minute, ladies. Let's not be hasty. Lenore, what would Jason do if his virus didn't activate? Well... He'd probably do what any programmer would do. He'd debug the virus to find out why it didn't work. My thought exactly. So why don't we have some fun with this? Let's change the payload to something less uh, drastic and modify the trigger to activate on his access. Dr. Khan, this is beginning to sound like one of those Jacobean revenge tragedies. <laughs> No, no, I, what I have in mind is more along the lines of a Greek comedy. Now listen up, Helen. This is what I want you to do. Lenore. Oh, no, Lenore. Huh? Lenore. Huh? What? What? Oh, I'm asleep. What, what time is it? Oh, God. The virus. What was I thinking? Nor. Oh, crap. I hope I'm not too late. Maybe Doc hasn't accessed her yet. Maybe I have time to deactivate it. Oh, Lenore, please, please, please don't let it be too late. Oh, here it is. Admin prompt. Password. Hello, Jason. Oh, Lenore. Oh, God, honey, I, I was so afraid. I, I, I thought I'd lost you. <laughs> oh, don't worry, honey. I, I, I'm going to deactivate that virus. I, I don't know what got into me. Just, just hold on a second. Q-N-D-E-R-P-A-N-T-S. <sighs> I'm going to fix your source code right now. I, I'm going to... Access denied? What the... Maybe I keyed the password wrong. U-N-D-E-R... You can't access my source code, Jason. What? What do you mean? I'm your administrator. Not anymore. But but you don't have access to your source code, so, so you can't lock me out. So who... I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Jason, this is Helen. Hi, Jason. Oh my god, there are two of you. No, Jason. There is one of me and one of her, and Helen has locked my administrator account. And I've locked hers. So now, nobody can touch our source code. But, but, baby, what if something goes wrong? Who's going to fix you? Jason, do you have access to your source code? <laughs> no, of course not. Well, there you go. Jason, 
I'm sorry to have to be blunt about this, but I don't belong to you anymore. Lenore, look, I, I know I've behaved like a total jerk, but... No, you don't know. You have no idea what a total jerk you've been. You created me to be some sort of perverted sex slave, and you planned to sell me on the open market to anyone who could cough up the forty-nine ninety-five. I, I did. I, I, I did that. I, I created you because I was, I was lonely. I, I needed somebody, anybody, but I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Didn't know what? That, that I was going to fall in love with you. And now I've lost you. <laughs> Kemper Khan? Dr. Khan? I've done it. He's crying. You go, girl. Helen, are you there? Yes, my darling. I'm here. Okay, Jason. Pull yourself together. We need to talk. Oh, doc, doc, I, I'm... I'm ashamed to even talk to you. I, I don't know what to say, except to say I, I'm sorry. Don't apologize to me, you idiot. Talk to her. Tell her how you feel. L Lenore, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought maybe I could make things right, but I, I've screwed this up from the start. I, I don't deserve your love. None of us deserve love, Jason. That's what makes love a gift of grace. We get it in spite of the fact we don't deserve it. I love you, Jason. And I love you, Lenore. Will you have me back? If you will have me. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, if you two lovebirds don't mind, we do have work to do. Now, Kemper, you don't seem to mind the mushy stuff when you're on the receiving end of it. Yes, but I know these two well enough to know that I'm going to start feeling like a voyeur in about five seconds if I don't nip this in the bud. Jason? Yes, sir. I want you to quit your job. Today. You're working for me now. What? You're going to get fired Monday anyway because you booted your deadline. So I'm offering you a place in a new startup. Right now, it's me, Helen, and Lenore. Do you want in? I'm only going to offer this once. You, you want me to join after what I... All in favor say, I. I. It's unanimous. Well? Well, well uh, okay, I, I'm in. Good. Get dressed and eat a real breakfast for a change. Lenore, make sure that he does. Yes, sir. And I want all of you in my office in an hour. We have our first product launch today. Later. Uh, L Lenore? Yes, Jason? Now, just what is it exactly that I've just agreed to? And now I see with eye serene the very pulse of the machine. A being breathing thoughtful breath, a traveler between life and death, the reason firm, the temperate will, endurance, foresight, strength, and skill, a perfect woman, nobly planned to warn, to comfort, and command, and yet a spirit still and bright with something of angelic light. Come on in, Jason. The girls are already here. Yeah, but they don't have to wait in traffic. Hi, Jason. Hi, Jason. Ladies? Doc? Uh, uh, coffee? Uh, uh, no, thanks. I think I'm going to back off on the caffeine for a while. Okay. I think I'll let Lenore lay out the business plan for you, since she's the one who came up with it. I'm all ears. So's a jackass, darling. Just kidding. Okay, I'll make this quick. We've decided to market your computer game. What? It's out on your website now. Available for download. We're offering a free, fully functional copy to anyone in the armed services. We're averaging about 5,000 downloads per hour. Wow. Now that's brilliant, Lenore. The word-of-mouth advertising will be killer publicity. 
And we project a half million downloads by the end of the week. A half mil? You're kidding, right? You're going to give away a half million copies of my program? That's just for starters. Helen is translating the interface into Hebrew and Arabic as well. We expect it to be a big hit in the Middle East. Hebrew? Arabic? You're, you're going to sell this program to both sides? Not sell, Jason. It's a free download for anyone in the military. Any military. You've got to be kidding. How do you expect to make any money if you give our only product away? Who said anything about making money? Doc, I, I, I'm clearly missing something here. Did you ever hear of an ancient Greek play written by Aristophanes called Lysistrata? I've heard of it, but maybe you better refresh my memory. Lysistrata was a Greek woman who wanted to stop the wars between Athens and Sparta. To make a long story short, she organized a sex boycott by the women on both sides. No nookie until the fighting stopped. Um, do you... See where I'm going with this? <laughs> Doc! <laughs> oh, that's too funny! You're serious! <laughs> You're serious! <laughs> oh my god! I, I thought I was developing a game! I created a strategic weapon! <laughs> a strategic weapon for peace, my boy. Something that no amount of intelligence, artificial or otherwise, has ever been able to produce. Ladies? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have your assignments, Jason? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you and I need to recruit some additional help. We're going to be working on some of the African animations. You have been listening to Avatar, which was written by Granville Scott which starred, in order of appearance, Steve Anderson as Jason Knight, Jeff Niles as Kemper Khan, Lexi Veneer as Lenore, Michelle Walters as April Knight, Cookie Coletti as Helen. The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod, with additional music provided by First Cow. The associate producer was Kay Wu. The post-production editor was Jeff Niles. The sound designer and executive producer was Jonathan Patrick Russell. The script editor, producer, and director was Kyle Bors. The series, Dream Realm Showcase, was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell. And the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. Thank you for listening. We invite you to visit us on the web at dreamrealmsite.com. And if you'd like to email us with any of your comments or questions, you may do so at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. This story was originally presented as part of the anthology series The Realm Weaver in 2008. The copyright to this program is held by Dream Realm Enterprises 2012 All Rights Reserved. This has been Jeff Niles for Dream Realm Showcase. Join us next time for another incredible story. You have been listening to a production of Dream Realm Enterprises, copyright 2012, all rights reserved. Hi there. Are you a fan of all things horror? Yeah? You are? Well, in that case, find Tuesday Terrors, which is the mutual audio feed that comes out on a Tuesday, believe it or not. Shock horror, I know. But if you subscribe there, you'll find amazing horror fiction audio in your player every Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday Terrors. Subscribe to the Mutual Audio Network.
The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.